Well, good afternoon, everyone in Europe. This is Cyrus Mehta uh, calling in from uh, Cambridge, Massachusetts, where it's uh, early in the morning. And I welcome all of you to this uh, web webinar on the new East for the Architect platform. I'm going to try to cover the following agenda this morning. Uh, I'll first uh, go through some introductory slides to uh, just introduce the new East. But then the real uh, meat of the presentation will be through examples. I'll, I, I have four examples lined up for you, but it may be that I can't do all four in the one hour that we have, in which case I'll, I'll do this example one, three, and four, schizophrenia, lung cancer, and calls to R functions. And then if there's time, I'll go back and do the cardiovascular outcomes trial as well. So uh, without further ado, let's get started. So here we are. Uh, where are we with EAST? You can see uh, EAST has been developing steadily. In 1994, we had a DOS version of EAST, and, uh, and that uh, became very, very popular, so that uh, eventually in, in 2000, we moved it to a major upgrade on, uh, on, the, on, uh, on the Windows platform. That was EAST 2000. And then uh, the East for Windows continued to develop. And then an, another major upgrade in 2010 when we brought out uh, various adaptive capabilities in East, and that is the current East 5. And now uh, we've moved everything to a completely new platform, the Architect platform, which is going to be the future platform for all our software. All our software will, sh will share the Architect platform, including StatExact, LogExact, uh, including Compass, in, and all, all, all the software for design as well as for implementation will reside on this one platform and will share resources. Uh, so this, uh, what is, so that's where we are today. East on this Architect platform uh, currently integrates Size and East together. It, uh, it is backed up, as you can see, by 20 years of R&D. We started out in in 1994 with the DOS version. So as a result, it has been used in numerous clinical trials and has been battle tested. It is the industry standard, not only uh, uh, used in pharmaceutical and biotech companies, but regularly used in, at the FDA and other regulatory agencies. And we go there on uh, at least once a year to train the regulatory uh, statisticians. But I'm going to talk about the new East, which is uh, East 6 on the Architect platform. And what's special about it? Well, first of all, it has very, very broad coverage. It, it combines all the, all the single look designs that you would need in, in size with all the group sequential and adaptive designs that you would have gotten East 5. So in one integrated software tool, you can you can design fixed sample, group sequential, and adaptive trials. It does have a very superior user interface, which I will demonstrate with multiple windows, graphs, tables, and organization of designs. It has uh, one new feature, which is rapid creation of multiple scenarios. Because EAST is a design tool. Design is inherently an interactive procedure. You try out something, you don't like it, you try something else. And so you do need multiple scenarios uh, quickly. In the old East, you could only design one scenario at a time up to a total of 10. And it was a little bit uh, restrictive. But you will see that with the new East, you can immediately create hundreds of scenarios if you want and either uh, design them analytically or simulate them. And then uh, we also, of course, have a continuous uh, improvement. We have we committed to R&D on, uh, on, on the East software, as, as, and over the years you've seen how it has evolved and will continue to evolve. So uh, what I'm going to show you today is the, the greater flexibility uh, with futility boundaries and, uh, and displays of efficacy and futility boundaries on different scales, the, the ability to handle lags of uh, uh, response, such as uh, typically you might see that the endpoint is not observed instantaneously, but is observed after 10 weeks or 12 weeks or 24 weeks, and how that impacts the design. 
I will show you the ability to handle stratification and stratify randomized de designs. And I will show you uh, how to make external calls to R within each simulation cycle so that if, you, if, you, if there are features in each that are not sufficient for you, you can add your own by, by writing your R functions and simulating the design. And finally, I'll show you how we have in, now incorporated Bayesian methods into the power calculations. Where there's uncertainty about delta and sigma, we can put priors on these parameters and then uh, see the implications of, of, the, of those priors for the, for the power through a Bayesian version of power called assurance. So when you open East, you will get uh, something like this. The open east, you get a uh, opening screen, and uh, and you you have an option to do a tutorial, uh, but you make you you can bypass that and and just see the opening screen the way it is now. Uh, it 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 is a there's a log file which which gives you a list of all the features that are available to you with the expiry dates, but you have also uh, these different tabs. You have a home tab, which allows you to to change the various settings uh, and uh, and import and export uh, files and convert files from the old East Five to the new East and so on, you have an you have various editors for bringing in data from outside. Uh, you have uh, an analysis tab where you can do simple analyses, one sample, two sample, k sample analyses. Uh, you know, we're just doing tests of hypothesis and doing graphs. But the real guts of EAST is the design tab. And the design tab allows you to design tests, and they are grouped. So you see that there's one group here for continuous data, which is one sample, two sample, K sample. There's another group for binary data, with, uh, again, one, two, and many sample and regression. And there's another group for survival, uh, time to event data. And uh, if you look at any of these, uh, uh, icons, you'll see various choices. So, for example, if you click on the two sample continuous data, you'll see uh, parallel designs and crossover designs of all these different types. If you go to binomial and click on uh, two sample binomial, you'll get difference of proportions, ratio of proportions, odds ratios. If you go to many sample, you'll see single arm designs, parallel designs, and multi arm designs and also multiple comparisons procedures, pairwise comparisons versus a common control. Uh, you have regression for log uh, designs for logistic regression, and, and then you have the, uh, continue the, the survival data with various uh, tests, the log rank test with accrual rates being fixed or with study duration being fixed. And so uh, this is the sort of uh, interface for EAST, and uh, we will now illustrate with various examples, so I'll move back into the example one, which is a schizophrenia trial that we designed a, a long time ago for a pharmaceutical company. The trial uh, is a uh, uh, in a, in, in, in a psychiatry. The 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 patients have. Uh, schizophrenia, negative symptom schizophrenia. It's a two-arm trial of a senapine versus olanzapine. And the, end, but the important thing here to note is that the end point is not observed right away. It's observed after 26 weeks. It's a, it's on a, it's, it's a scale. It's the negative symptoms ass assessment scale. And uh, it's observed at week 26 after randomization. So it's the change in the negative symptom assessment score at week 26. And uh, it's designed, it's powered at 80% for delta equals 2 with a sigma of 7.5. However, uh, delta uh, could be smaller. It could be as small as 1.6, uh, and that's still a clinically meaningful effect. And so we'd like to examine various scenarios in a range from 1.6 to 2. Enrollment ramps up to eight patients per week, and there are dropouts, eight percent, up to 8% dropouts. So we go to our EAST software, sorry, 
and we uh, select. It's a two sample test, so we go to this two sample, and it's a difference of means, so we select difference of means, and we get uh, the, 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 the new East uh, user interface. You can see this user interface consists of several windows. This left hand side window is really a library in which you can store uh, various designs that you like and, and retrieve them later and, uh, and examine them in greater detail. This right hand side window uh, is a help window for online help for uh, various features in East. Uh, then uh, in the center is the input and in the uh, in which you can enter the power, the, the number of looks, and so on. And then you get an output preview below it, which is a very quick initial summary of the output. And then you can, of course, drill down and look at it in greater detail. Now, these windows can open and close. Uh, for instance, this, this left window and right window are permanent windows, but you can move them to the side through this push pin if you want more space. You close this in this manner and you can close the right-hand one with the push pin, or you can leave them open. Uh, and the, the central section is the input and output. You can, you can see the whole thing as an output. You can see the whole thing as an input. Uh, you can move this uh, little uh, window shade up and down, or you can also move it up and down through these icons, or, or view it as a split screen. We are going to leave it as a split screen now and, and design the trial. Now recall what we said about the trial. Uh, we said that, that this trial is designed to be designed for a delta of 2 with uncertainty and 80% power. So we go back into East and say, well, we want a one-sided alpha of 0 0.025 test. Uh, we want 80% power, but we are going to allow ourselves to examine both 80 and 90. So uh, any of these cells which are pink allow you to put in a range of values rather than just a single value. And that's how you create multiple scenarios. So here I'm going to put in uh, 0 0.8 and 0 0.9. Now uh, uh, we want a difference of means. Uh, we believe that the, we, we are looking for a difference of mean of 2 on the NSA scale. However, uh, we, let's look at all values between 1.6 and 2 in steps of 0.1. So that creates five more scenarios. And let's look for sigma. Uh, we said that we believe in a sigma of 7.5, but let's look at sigmas of 7, 7.5, and eight. So now we have created a, 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 a large number of scenarios, uh, which uh, we will examine by pressing this compute button. And there are 30 different scenarios, and they're all being created, and they will be displayed in a very quick preview in this output preview window. Here you see them all being displayed um, in this output preview window, which is the, below the split screen. Now, all 30 have been created. You can quickly look at them by just moving this uh, output preview up and, uh, and, and scrolling through them as you like. You can see that all the sample sizes, they range from, you know, uh, four, uh, in the upper 300s and all the way uh, up to 700, 800, uh, uh, maybe even up to 1,000. So there are lots of scenarios that have been created. Uh, you, if you wanted to examine any of them, you could just pick, pick them off and look at them in a little bit more detail by looking at this output summary icon. By clicking on this, you'll see them in the more familiar East-type mode. But, you know, there are a lot of them, and you maybe don't want to look at all of them in this uh, uh, one after another. You Perhaps you just want to look at a few of them because you really don't, want a sample size of 600. Maybe you want to only look at those that have a sample size of between uh, 400 and 500, in which case you can filter these outputs. And you hit on this filter uh, tool, and you get uh, the dialog box for
or uh, filtering uh, out based on any criterion you want. And there are numerous criteria here. We're going to use sample size as our criterion for filtering. And uh, we'll say, let's filter based on sample size anything that has a sample size greater than 400 and has a sample size less than less than 500. And if we click there, now we have filtered out. We are only down to four, four different uh, scenarios. And we can look at these four in summary mode, or we can look at them uh, uh, just in this manner. And looking at them, we say, well, let's suppose that the one we are really after, because we want 80% power, is this 442. Then we can save this one in our library by clicking on the Save button. So here's design number 10. It's saved. And maybe we'll give it a new name for future use by saying rename this as One Look. So here is our One Look design. It's in the library. And uh, we can now, now that it's in the library, we can look at it in more detail. For example, we can, we can look at power versus sample size graphs, or we can look at um, you know, power versus delta, and so on. Uh, the other thing we can do is we can look at uh, it in greater detail in, by hitting on this Details button. And we'll see uh, not only the, uh, the sample size, we'll see the critical point, we'll see the you know, uh, various other uh, features of this design. Maybe they're not that many because it's a single look design. But it, there would be more features if we were to convert this into a group sequential design, which we will now proceed to do. So what we do is, uh, let's say we want to explore this design further. Then we click on this Edit button to edit it. And again, now here's the design. Let's say we now want to convert it from a single look design into a group sequential design with four looks then we will change this number of looks from 1 to 4. And immediately, a new tab appears. It's the Boundaries tab. And you have to specify the boundaries. And uh, so you, you can specify in, in this part the efficacy boundaries, and in this part the futility boundaries. And uh, the efficacy boundaries you're familiar with, we can have spending functions, hey, biddle, pito, and wang, siatis, just like East 5. Let's go with the standard. Land Demetz, O'Brien Fleming, four looks, uh, boundaries. They are all displayed over here. Uh, but let's, let's see what we can do with futility. You, you have um, many more choices for futility boundaries now than you had in East 5. You can, you can, before, you could only spend, uh, use the, the beta spending functions for uh, futility boundaries. But now, you can stop based on a p-value. If the p-value is very high, you could stop. You can use conditional power, which is also a very useful way of stopping, very much more intuitive. If the conditional power is very low at any look, you can say we'll stop for futility. So let's use conditional power. You can de design based on uh, the designed delta, which is 2, or the estimated delta, which is whatever is estimated at the interim. So let's use the estimated delta for conditional power. So any time that the estimated delta by sigma uh, is such that the conditional, any time that the conditional power based on the estimated delta by sigma is small, we'll stop. And you can put what you mean by small here. I said at the first look, if the conditional power is, ba is less than 20% stop for futility, at the second look, if it's less than 10% stop for futility, and at the third look, less than 6. And so if you, if you were to look at this design, Here's how it looks with the efficacy and futility on, on the Z scale. But uh, let's say that, uh, you know, it's on, and this is a, a new feature also in EAST, that you can selectively decide when you want to stop for efficacy and when you want to stop for futility. So suppose you really don't want to stop for efficacy at the first look. It's too early. There's 25% of the information only, so you can turn it off by turning off this checkbox. But on the other hand, for futility, you might want to stop at that first look, so leave that on. 
But you may not want to stop for futility at the second and third looks. You may only want to stop for efficacy at the second and third looks. And in that case, uh, you turn those off. And now uh, if you press recalc, you'll get the, the new boundaries all recalculated. And now the uh, boundaries look like this. There's a, there's a futility stop at the first look. And then there are, there's an efficacy stop at the second look, an efficacy stop at the third look, and then a final analysis. So this is a new feature of EAST. And now if we, uh, uh, if we, if we say we like this design, uh, then what we can say, let's, let's press the compute button on this design. And now you see the difference between a one-look design and a four-look design. The, the one-look design had only a sample size of 442 patients. Uh, this, this design with four looks and a futility boundary requires 625 patients. And let's say we want to save this also on the library, then we bring it up here, and we can rename it as four look. And this can be examined further as well, or it can be compared side by side with the one look by uh, either looking at it uh, in you know, in this summary manner, uh, as as is the case with the regular East, or with the detailed manner, uh, if you want to look at it in in detail in side by side windows. So either way, you can look at this design. Uh, let's see what else we can do with the new East. So we've designed it. We've shown you uh, the input and output preview. We've shown you filter. We've shown you how to convert from one look to group sequential, shown you how to view boundaries on uh, uh, different scales and, uh, and look at different times. Now I'm going to show you this new uh, feature of Bayesian probability of success or assurance. So go back to East. Let's take this for look design and let's edit it further. Okay. Now in this design now, uh, if you look at it, uh, it, uh, it has 80% power, it has 625 patients, it's four looks, and we know the boundaries. These are the boundaries. Uh, let's go back to this design and look at this box here, which says assurance or probability of success. What does this mean? Let's give it more space. What I'll do is I'll close this uh, ribbon so we get a little more uh, space to work with. One of the things with the new East is it's good to have a big big monitor because then you can look at uh, many different windows at the same time and no doubt when you have your own copy you will be able to do that. Uh, here I'm just using my laptop. Now I click on this assurance and immediately uh, what happens is I, I can now specify how uncertain I am about delta. I designed for a delta of 2 with a, stig a sigma of 7.5 but uh, uh, but you know, I may not be—I may not be that uh, confident that delta is equal to two. I might want to put a prior on delta, so uh, I can put a normal prior, I can put a uniform prior, or I can put a user-specified prior, any prior that I like. So uh, I go and and say I want to put in a normal prior, and uh, and then I can specify my prior through percentiles or through. Uh, a user specified mean and standard deviation for delta, which I might get from uh, historical data, for instance. So let's say that I really am uncertain about the true delta, and I say that, well, uh, I'm going to put a prior on it. And so I, what, what kind of prior should I put? I'm going to put a normal prior on delta. I don't know the true delta. I might say, well, I, I do believe that it is centered at 2. But there is some spread around this. I don't really know the true delta. So I'll say that, well, you know, uh, this, this prior has a, a standard deviation of 1. Um, and so I'll put a standard deviation of 1 and a mean of 2. So now I've put uncertainty. I've introduced uncertainty into delta. And, and what I'll do is, in a Bayesian manner, integrate out over this prior integrate out the power for all different values of delta over this prior. And, that, and when I, so when I now click on the compute button, I can see uh, that this, uh, although 
if I was 100% sure about delta equals 2 and powering for delta equals 2, uh, I'd have 80% power. Uh, this uncertainty brings it down, and the Bayesian probability of success is only 0.685, not 0.8. And that should be taken into account when you're doing the sample size calculations. Now, now, what if I'm a little bit more certain about standard deviation? Let's say instead of a, a standard deviation of 1, uh, I believe that the, that the mean is 2 with a standard deviation of 0.1. Uh, now, I'm, I'm much more sure about the true value of delta. My, now my prior is much tighter. It looks maybe something like this. Uh, you know, it's just like this, around, uh, around a, a mean of 2. So with this type of prior, uh, if, I, if I look at the Bayesian probability of success, it's 0.798. It's almost the same as, uh, uh, as, the, as, the, as, the, as, if, as though I knew delta for, for certain. And so uh, here's a, uh, this is a new feature which uh, would allow you to uh, look at uh, different, uh, uh, you know, factor in your uncertainty about these design parameters. Now, let me go and show you yet one more uh, aspect of this design before I move on to a new example. And uh, what is that? Uh, that is incorporating delays in the uh, endpoint. So it's a delay. Remember, this is a delayed endpoint. In, the, in previous versions of EAST and in every other uh, group sequential software that I'm aware of, uh, there is no explicit factoring in of delayed response except for survival studies. But when you have endpoints in binomial and normal which are delayed, uh, that's not taken into account in, in terms of the sample size calculations, and it should be. So let me show you how it's taken into account in the new East. So we go back to this design, this for-look design, and we now say that uh, uh, we have a delay. So we get uh, accrual, a new tab says accrual and dropout. And we know accrual is at the rate of eight patients per week, but we know that there's a response lag of 26 weeks. So we click on this uh, response lag of 26, and we know that there's a dropout of 8%, so we put in 0 0.08. And now, as soon as we've entered this, this new tab, we have not changed the design. It's still 625 patients. Uh, design. It's still powered for 80%. It still uh, has an alpha of 0.025. It still has these very same uh, boundaries. However, uh, time has entered into the equation now. We, we know now that this study is not going to be instantaneous response, and we are going to have to wait uh, for 26 weeks for the very first patient to be a completer. And that's, uh, uh, that you can see through this chart. So this, this chart uh, is a chart of sample size and completers versus time. So here uh, I can make this full screen. On the x-axis is time. On the y-axis is enrollees and completers. So this, these, uh, this blue line is enrollees, and this uh, orange line is completers. You can see, for example, that by in, at, at week 60, you will have enrolled uh, 479 patients, but, but not all of them have reached the 26-week endpoint. 249 of them have reached the, the, the endpoint. The remaining uh, 210 or so are still, uh, uh, are still uh, in various stages of observing the 26-week uh, endpoint. So if you were to cross the stopping boundary now and stop the trial, you, might, uh, you would have to use the data from the 249 completers only. But, but in terms of how expensive the trial has been, you'd have to factor in that you actually had uh, enrolled 479 patients. So you have to take into account that, that you will use completers for making a decision, but you will be using uh, enrollees or uh, sample size for uh, deciding on, uh, on the saving. That has to be taken into account. So let's, uh, 
uh, take that into account by uh, by clicking this compute button. And now, if you if you see the compute uh, sample size is 679 rather than uh, 625 that it was before. Uh, and let's see why that's the case. We go back here and save this design. So this is the new design. It's again, we'll rename it. It's for look, but ha but has a delay in it. So we'll put lag, for look with lag. And if we look at this design uh, a little bit more carefully by looking at these uh, uh, design uh, details, now these details are a little bit uh, complex. Let's not look at everything. We will get uh, a little bit confusing. Let's just look at this uh, uh, this box first. This box is the same. It's the uh, it's just basically the how much alpha was spent at each of the four looks, and what was the boundaries at each of the four looks. So you can see the efficacy boundaries are the O'Brien Fleming and the uh, futility boundaries is based on conditional power. And, it, and it's for equally spaced looks at 25, 50, 75, and 1. And these are, but, but see now, on the, uh, in this column, what you're seeing is sample size. Uh, so sample size is what uh, constitutes the, the cost of the trial. But the decision is based on completers. And this is uh, observable through this second box. If you look at this second box a little bit carefully, you again see it's a four-look design. Uh, these are the information fractions, which is based on uh, sample size. Uh, uh, rather, it's based on S over S. It's based on completers, because information comes in only from completers, not from sample size. Only the people who have finished the 26-week endpoint provide information. So uh, information fraction is based on 156 over 625, 313 over 625, 416, and so that's information. Uh, but the sample size is 378, completers is 156, dropouts is 14, and so there's, there's still 208 in the pipeline. And these 208 in the pipeline are going to count. Uh, even even if you stop the trial now, you still have to account for these 208 patients. Similarly, at the second look, there'll be 208 patients in the pipeline. If you stop at the third look, there'll be 169 patients in the pipeline if you stop. And so if you eventually look at what kind of savings did you get, well, you look at the sam look at this last block of information, and you see that, well, the, the, the maximum sample size is 679, which is what I need uh, to commit to this group sequential trial. Uh, but the expected sample size uh, under the alternate hypothesis is 598. So there's not that much of a saving in, in terms of sample size. Now, if you look at it in terms of the expected number of completers, you see a different picture. The the, the completers is over here, expected. Uh, so here the maximum uh, number of completers is 625, and the expected number of completers is 410. In the old versions of EAST and in, in other group sequential, when you don't take into account lags and you don't take into account dropouts, uh, you would look at this, these numbers. And these numbers would give you a misleading impression that actually you have saved uh, the difference between 625 and 410, which is 215 uh, patients. But in fact, you have only saved the difference between 679 and 598, which is only about 80 patients. And that, uh, Im that's the impact of the dropouts. Another way to look at the impact of dropouts is to, uh, is to look at these plots. Suppose you look at the uh, stopping boundaries, and you also look at, suppose you uh, look at the uh, stopping boundaries plot, and you also look at the sample size versus completers plot, and you look at them side by side. So I'm going to look at these two side by side, arrange them side by side. And I, I don't really need these other ones. I'll close them up. And I'll arrange these again. So 
now you look. Here on the left-hand side are the, is the chart of sample size versus completers. On the right-hand side is stopping boundaries. So, for example, if you look at this first boundary, uh, first efficacy boundary, you have uh, three, you're taking this look when there are 313 completers. But if you go to this side and see when do you get 313 completers, you get 313 completers here when you have 547 subjects. So if you stop now, uh, although you have made the decision based on 313 completers, you have paid for it in terms of 547 subjects. If you look at the second look, it, it turns out that the second look happens with 469 completers. And if you go here and see when you get 469 completers, you see that, well, by the time you get 469 completers, enrollment is over. So you're not going to save any sample size at all at that second look, but you'll save some time. So if you're interested in saving time, it's a good group sequential design. If you're interested in saving sample size, you're not getting it from that second look. Okay. All right. So I think that's enough about uh, this particular design. I'm going to move on to another one. Now I'll, I'll, I'll delete this workbook just to uh, get some space here. And I'll move on to uh, my second example. And this example I'll go to is this lung cancer example. So this is what I'm calling example three. Uh, the, the base case is a two-sided test with, a lo uh, with an alpha of 0.05. It's a time-to-event trial, and, uh, and it has 90% power to detect a hazard ratio of 0.447. Uh, the, the control arm has a median uh, uh, survival of something like uh, 70 weeks, which, uh, which give, co corresponds to a hazard of 0 0.0092, has three equally spaced uh, stopping boundaries, and, uh, and the enrollment is uniform at the rate of 12 per week uh, for 24 weeks. And uh, now you could design time to event trials before in, in the old East, but the new thing here is that this is a stratified design. We are going to take into account stratification by cell type, by age, and by Karnofsky performance status. So first of all, let's design the base case without stratification and then incorporate the stratification into it. And the stratification factors are over here. Uh, they are cell type, age group, and Karnofsky performance status. So going back to the east, we say that, uh, well, we've, I've saved this uh, in uh, a workbook, so I'll just bring it in from my workbook. It's a, it's a stratified workbook. I bring it in, and let's look at the base case now. This is the base case. Uh, we take a look at it in, in our editor. Uh, we, we'll also clean out all these outputs, which we don't need anymore, because we're doing a new example, so I, I'll clean these out. Now, let's look at this base case by itself, and we'll start fresh. Uh, so we'll start, so if we start fresh, it's a three-look design. It's a superiority design. It's two-sided, alpha of 0 0.05, 90% power, and, uh, and the hazard ratio is 0.4466. It corresponds to a median survival of 75 weeks. Now, um, boundaries, it has three equally spaced boundaries of the O'Brien-Fleming type and no futility boundaries. Accrual, accrual rate is 12 per week, and we are accruing for 24 weeks, so we're getting 288 subjects. If we click on the compute button, we see that in order to get 90% power with this pretty good hazard ratio, 0.4466, uh, uh, and with, uh, with this hazard ratio, you can get it with 66 uh, events. And, uh, and if you want to uh, take a, put in 288 subjects, then with 288 subjects, you can also see how long the study will last uh, by just taking this base case and uh, looking at it in, in the summary mode. 
and we'll see that uh, this study, study duration is uh, 52 weeks, one year. So one year study, uh, that is to say maximum one year, but you know you could stop early uh, uh, because you could cross a, uh, a boundary, and uh, and under H1 you would uh, you would cross this boundary at 43 weeks. So uh, so this is the design uh, with 288 subjects, 90% power, but it has no um, no stratification taken into account. Now let's say that we wanted to. Uh, uh, incorporate stratification into this design. Well, then we, we would uh, incorporate it through our simulation button. So if we click on simulate, we'll get a new dialog box. And this dialog box still has the base case, still has 66 events. It still has, uh, uh, you know, 288 patients and a cruel rate of 12. It still has uh, the same uh, uh, O'Brien Fleming uh, boundaries and alpha spending, but it allows you to simulate, and it allows you. So, so we can first just simulate this design the way it is without incorporating anything into it, and uh, and we should get uh, something close to the 90% power, but uh, we may not get it because you know it's a very small number of events, 66, but it's worth trying. So uh, let's click on the simulate button and uh, simulate this design 10,000 times. Here it's, uh, you see the count going up. And, uh, and in fact, here is uh, these are the simulation results in, in summary mode. Uh, so you see the, the power is pretty close to the 90% uh, simulated uh, 10,000 times. And this uh, design, uh, we can now further uh, incorporate uh, we can further incorporate into this design the uh, stratification. So we click on this design and click on edit. And uh, now, this, now we look at this uh, uh, input of the simulations, but we include one more option, which is stratification information. Now in the stratification information, as soon as we uh, allow that, we see that we get this new tab for stratification information. And this stratification tab allows you to say how many stratum variables are there and uh, how many levels of each stratum and, uh, and what are the uh, hazard ratios within strata. So we have three stratification variables, right? We have, we have these three stratification variables, cell type, age group, and Karnofsky performance status. And so we'll say three. And the, f uh, the first one is cell type. Second one is age. And third one is Karnofsky. Cell type is at four levels. Age is at two, and Karnofsky is at three. And we can label it. For convenience, this first cell type uh, is a uh, small cell. Next one is uh, adenocarcinoma. Next one is a uh, large cell. And the uh, last one is squamous. And then the fractions. Uh, if this uh, small cell is 28% of the population. The adeno is 13%. The large is 25%. And the squamous is 34%. And, uh, and then, of course, uh, you need to also specify the hazard, the, the hazard ratio for, uh, for each of these different uh, levels of the stratum. And so in the response generation information, you can specify that. Uh, that uh, Let's say the baseline is small cell. Then adeno versus small cell has a hazard of 2.127. Uh, large versus baseline has a hazard ratio of 
eight, and squamous uh, versus the small cell baseline is point four one three. And in this way, you can enter for age and for Karnofsky, uh, uh, you can enter the the stratification and the uh, hazard. And I've already done this, so to save time, I'll just bring up the dialog box called SimStrat1, in which I've already done this, and uh, so that we can see it as it is. So here you see I've already entered all the information for cell type over here, and for age, and for Karnofsky. And, uh, and, and here I can look at them. Uh, there are 24 strata, and I can look at them individually. Uh, and I've also entered in the response. Uh, you can enter the, these responses either through a model or you can enter them individually for each, each, uh, uh, each stratum level of each stratum. You can enter them indiv each, in, individually for each, uh, each stratum ID of the 24. But I've entered them through a Cox proportional hazard model with the hazard rate uh, uh, depends on the treatment the cell type, the age, and the Karnofsky performance status. And uh, I, I put in the hazard ratios here for each of them, for age, for cell type, and for treatment. And uh, then I can see uh, over here what is the hazard ratio for any particular stratum ID. The stratum, I'm assuming a constant hazard ratio, but I can see the baseline hazards for treatment and control, and they'll be different from uh, stratum to stratum. So for example, if I look at adeno greater than uh, 50 and uh, Karnofsky greater than 70, then it's 0.0014 and 0.006. If I look at uh, small cell, it's 0.0015 and 0.07 and so on. So and the point is that now I have uh, entered uh, stratification factors, and, uh, and that's going to have an impact on power, and that's also going to have an impact on the study duration. So if I click on simulate now, and I run this design, I get a uh, look at what happened to the power. Uh, I, I ran this with a stratified log rank test, and the power has dropped from 89 to 84. If I was to ignore the, uh, the stratification, uh, uh, if I was to continue to uh, use the stratified design, but then not use a stratified log rank test. To use an unstratified log rank test, what would be the impact? I can simulate that, and I see that, uh, in fact, it drops even further. It drops to 76%. So if I look at these three designs side by side, I look at SIM1, SIM2, and SIM3 side by side in, in a summary mode, I can see some interesting things. I see, for instance, that uh, when I don't take into account uh, stratification at all, I have uh, the full 90% power. Uh, the study and the 66 events uh, arrive in a on average within uh, within 43 weeks. When I when I but when, when I take into account the stratification, the power has dropped to 84%. But even worse, the study duration is, is extended from 43 weeks to 167 weeks, and that's because of the great differences in because of the great heterogeneity in the population. It takes a much longer time for the number of events for these 66 events to arrive. If I ignore the log rank statistic, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's about the same study duration, 172, uh, but uh, power has dropped even more to uh, 0.76. So this is a, a, a new feature, which is a very important one, taking into account stratification through simulation. Now, for my last example, I will uh, quickly show you what happens when we use the, uh, what, what about the R capability in, uh, in, in the software. So uh, let, let's just take a, a very simple base case of a single look design with an alpha of 0.025 and, and all default values. And what, what we're going to illustrate here uh, we, we, is what if, we, we, if, if the distribution is not exponential. It's a survival trial, but the, dis but the distribution is not exponential. That is, the hazard is not constant. It's a 
And so we'll use a Weibel for the distribution. I'll bring this, distrib I'll bring this design in also now. I'll uh, get rid of this one. And I'll bring in a new design through the uh, workbook. And this is my R example. And uh, let's look at the base case first. It's a survival study, which has uh, uh, alpha of 0 0.025, 90% power, and uh, it and uh, and it has uh, it, it requires 88 events for the 90% power. It uh, we are assuming that a single look. There's no group sequential. There's no dropouts. Accrual is at 22 per uh, month and 38 month trial. Now, let's uh, look at this, and first we'll simulate this. If we were to just simulate this design the way it is, we would uh, click on the simulate button uh, and run it. But let's look at what happens if we were to introduce R into it. So we, we, we'll, we'll go to the simulate tab, and we'll say, that uh, we want to, uh, we don't want to simulate exponential. We want to simulate with with a user-defined R function. So we select this user-defined R function, and uh, and now East allows you to uh, write your own R function for these four different tasks. You you can generate a response. You can compute the test statistic. You can. Uh, you can randomize. You can uh, you can have a different test statistic, like you can have a you know Harrington Fleming statistic, or you can have uh, Wilcox and Gayan statistic. You can randomize subjects uh, differently according to permuted blocks or according to urn. You can generate arrival times differently according to some some function or according to Poisson or whatever you want. I'm illustrating that you generate responses from Weibull. So. I, I go and bring in my Weibull function by going to the browse, and here's my survival Weibull. I open it. It's, it's stored in my hard disk, so I bring it in, and, it's, uh, and I brought it in here. I can view it. Here's the function. It's going to be uh, each, in each simulation cycle, instead of an exponential, I'm going to use a Weibull. So uh, uh, in a Weibull, I can change the shape and I can change the scale. So, and first of all, what's the name of this function? It's genviable, so I'll copy this, this name, and I will put it in here uh, so that now uh, it's uh, available. And now if I, let's first run this with a shape parameter of 1. If I run it with a shape parameter of 1, then it's like exponential. It's, uh, it's, it should give me a power of 0.9. And so I close this, and I save this function, and I simulate it. I'm doing 10,000. Maybe I should do a fewer because uh, running a little late. But let's we'll go through this and then uh, run the next one with only a thousand simulations. So you see the power is uh, almost uh, 90 percent, uh, up to Monte Carlo accuracy it is 90 percent. Uh, let's now re change this R function so that uh, we have a shape parameter uh, instead of 1, we'll have a shape parameter of 0.9. Now that's increasing hazards, which means that the power should drop. It's a, it's a viable with a shape parameter of 0.9. I'm going to run this uh, a thousand times. And see the impact on power. See the power has dropped to 83% because of the increasing hazard. If, what, if it, if, what if the hazards were decreasing? I can, uh, again, uh, you know, um, go back uh, and... Uh, uh, and, and view this function and make this uh, shape parameter, say, 1.25. Now, now the hazard is increasing hazard, uh, decreasing hazard, so I should get more power. If I simulate this one, I get, um, I get 97% power. 
So this is the, shows how important it is that you be sure that the distribution is exponential. If it's not exponential, if the hazard is not constant over time, then you need to take that into account in your sample size calculations. Of course, um, in many chronic diseases, exponential is a good uh, assumption. It may, it may not be the case with some types of uh, cancers or uh, some acute diseases. So getting back to uh, my concluding slides now, uh, I've shown you uh, three examples. I couldn't show you the fourth one on the uh, outcomes trial, but uh, I've given you the slides. They're available to you, and uh, you'll be able to uh, view them later. Uh, but just to give you an idea of where we are going with, uh, with EAST, this is EAST 6.1. It has assurance. It has stratified log rank and R connectivity. We're going to E6.2 shortly, maybe in, in, in the summer. It'll have uh, unblinded sample size re-estimation. Uh, it'll have uh, the ability to de design studies for negative binomial and Poisson, which is important in certain diseases like multiple sclerosis. It'll have gatekeeping procedures so for multiple endpoints. And then, you know, we'll move on to uh, uh, further developments in dose selection blinded sample size re-estimation and predictive plots, that is to say, looking at the data from a data monitoring committee point of view, that's what this is. The data monitoring committee actually has data available to it and might like to predict what's the future given where we are now. Is, is this, can we turn this study around or should, should we kill this study now uh, given where we are? Uh, or maybe, you know, seeing, well, can we stop the study now? Uh, given it across the boundary, but, you know, uh, what, would have, what would happen if we were to continue because we want to look at a secondary endpoint, for instance. So uh, thank you very much for your uh, time. And uh, I, I don't know if, if, you, if you would like to stay around for a few minutes for questions. I'd be happy to answer them. Yes, hi, and this is Mike White, the uh, marketing director here at, at uh, Cytel. And, yes, we are going to keep the lines open for a few minutes and allow for some questions that are coming in. Desires. First of all, I'd like to thank everyone who's, who's joined us today and is going to continue with us at the conclusion of this question and answer period. You'll be prompted uh, on your WebEx screen to a very short survey. It just takes a few minutes, and it would really help Cyrus and the East Development team know what you got out of today's uh, webinar, what you'd like to see in the future. And um, on behalf of Cyrus and those who uh, engage in the future development of East, those questions, uh, your responses are, are really important to them, and we appreciate you just taking the very few minutes uh, after uh, today's questions and answers. And uh, right from uh, the beginning, Cyrus mentioned that the slides are available right now uh, from com. You can just follow the um, call out on the bottom right of the home page to today's webinar, Streamlining Trial Design with East, and simply follow the link there for today's uh, download of the slides of today. And by tomorrow afternoon, the replay of today's webinar will be available to all uh, in the same place, the same location. Just go to the website homepage, sitel.com, and look for the uh, call out, the link for today's webinar, bottom right. Um, Cyrus, we often get the question uh, people want to know is the, um, about the availability of this new release in 6.1, and we can simply t tell people that they can contact us. Um, simply use the uh, sales at Cytel.com email, and um, we'll be able to step you through your licensing options for those who are current users of East and those who are interested in new licenses as well. So simply it's sales at Cytel.com, or just give us a call here at the main number. You can find also on the website uh, here in Massachusetts, 617-661-2011. Again, 617-661-2011. And Cyrus, we have a question coming in from uh, Mohammed, um, who wanted to know more about the Bayesian assurance capabilities. And uh, it would have to do when you're calculating the Bayesian uh, assurance um, can, are there prior distributions other than the normal uh, distribution that you selected? Are there, are there other options there when did, um, calculating the, the prior information? Yes, uh, that's, uh, that's right. There, there are other options available. Uh, now, uh, right now, the, you can use a normal prior and you can use a uniform prior, but you can also uh, have your own prior saved in a CSV file. 
and you can uh, you know you can call that file up from uh, from uh, so for example if i was to uh, bring up this uh, workbook again uh, this example here and let's look at this uh, design uh, so you have this assurance uh, checkbox and if you if you um, if you select user specified you get to browse and then as you browse the, you can have a prior csv file like i have over here and uh, then that prior csv file can uh, can bring in uh, your prior distribution which could be any of your choice thank you cyrus and um some some other people. Uh, Alan Rossington has asked about uh, do you need R installed, and uh, Charles actually answered that yes, you'll need to install separately. But when you open East and start East, so look for your version of R and check to make sure that it's compatible. Um, we also get the question a lot uh, when you're in using the uh, the simulation capabilities that you demonstrated. Could those uh, simulations also be used to take into account different parameters of a, of, of the different sites? So that actually you could use the simulations as somewhat as a, uh, if you will, a site selection tool, at least a, a guidance in um, in selecting. Sites. Yes, uh, yes, that's that's a very uh, useful feature of the simulations because you can use a site as a stratification factor, and by using site as a stratification factor, uh, you can have uh, you know different sites from different regions of the world when you have a global trial may have. Uh, different uh, patient characteristics and uh, so the response is the events might come in at different rates from different sites and uh, and so so the, the two features of the new east that will help you in the design one is the ability to use site as a stratification factor and the other is the ability to create multiple scenarios so you can have uh, uh, different scenarios uh, and a, a range of plausible uh, rates of uh, of arrival of events for the different sites and uh, and and then you can see you know within uh, within this uh, range of assumptions uh, of scenarios uh, whether the trial can be finished in a given amount of time or, wh or whether you you know a particular site is very slow in producing events and therefore uh, may not be a site that you want to select for uh, for the trial, because if if you want a trial like an like one of those big CV outcomes trials where you need 600 events, and uh, you have a site which is only putting on low risk patients, then uh, that site will not contribute very many events uh, in in a in a given amount of time, and and may and may not be suitable, or it may enroll patients very fast, but the but the events may not come that fast. So there's a trade off. And these simulations can be done with multiple scenarios under different assumptions about enrollment and about different assumptions about uh, the hazard rate. And so uh, with that, you should be able to decide whether you want a site in there or not. Uh, thank you, uh, Cyrus. Uh, we're looking at a couple of uh, different uh, um choices here and questions. Um, John Constant asks, and I'm, I'll just pose it uh, to you again, um, if um, some questions about the, the bullet points for the CV outcomes case. Do, um, do you have a slide for that? Yeah, I'll bring it up. Yeah, John Constant asking, what, what, what are the bullet points for the CV outcomes case? Yeah. Maybe you, you could review that, and we'll see if John has a, a more specific question. Yeah, uh, so these are the bullet uh, the, these are the bullet points that I was going to uh, illustrate with the CV outcomes case uh, uh, because you know I, I work a lot with uh, CV outcomes trials myself. I'm on uh, several uh, uh, you know I'm on a steering committee for a major CV outcomes trial. I'm on a strategic advisory committee for another, and I may be on a data monitoring committee for a third. Uh, these trials, uh, uh, you know. Uh, as you know, uh, you you can you can file early uh, based on uh, uh, demonstrating safety against a uh, non inferiority margin of 1.8, but then you have to go on and demonstrate 
that the uh, uh, that it's safe against a non inferiority margin of one point three and uh, it it be useful to be able to answer these types of questions such as uh you know well what's uh, how how long is the study going is is a, can you really do a five year study uh, given the the risk um, given given the event rates that you have uh, how fast can you get to one point eight because you know that's the uh, one of the key things you know uh, you you want to be able to uh, quickly file for 1.8 pass with a meta analysis combining events from uh, uh, different studies which would then be stratification factors in in our simulation tool and uh, and then you know go on for the 1.3 it, it, did you have uh, uh, some specific questions for me okay now, I believe John, um, uh, he says yes, uh, thanks is exactly what he was looking for. And uh, I think we, we're now at the uh, at, at 10 minutes and past the top of the hour. And we'd like to thank everyone else for uh, everyone for joining us and all those who stayed for the question and answer period. Uh, this question and answer period will be uh, part of the WebEx recording, which will be posted to Cytel.com tomorrow. So you, you can or your colleagues um, replay, review at your convenience uh, today's presentation with, with Cyrus. So on behalf of everyone here at Cytel, and of course Cyrus Mehta, we wish you a very good day. And again, thank you so much for joining us today, and a pleasant day for the rest. Thank you. <laughs>